Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on post notifications. We got a lot to discuss. Cardi B continues to go off, okay? Makes the girls bow down and she gets some apologies from her ops, okay? And then also, we will be going over her speech that she gave um, yesterday, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But here is what Botch and Bitter had to say on Spaces. Because I be sparing niggas. Not sparing niggas on the argument shit. Sparing niggas in real life. Don't think people be telling me? Ash Miracle. Little stylies, little this every time that they see you around. Because you'll be around. And I spare niggas. Y'all not going to keep, you're not going to keep picking on me. You're not going to keep bullying me. I'm Ash not nobody miracle. that nobody's going to bully. Especially a man. No man you pick on me. I don't give a fuck you suck me. Who the fuck you think you are? Try me and try me and try me like I'm a hoe. Now, Cardi B is being a little bit dramatic. I mean, I don't think it's worth yelling over spaces, okay, over a blogger. I think she's being a tad bit dramatic. Um, And I just want to know, why is Botch and Bitter allowed to send threats? If this was Nicki Minaj or any other female rapper... They would be getting dragged. But Botch and Bitter can send a threat? That's very interesting. So let me know how y'all feel about that. But it looks like Armand has apologized. The tweet says, um, I don't want no problem. Y'all got it. We gonna get it without being attached to controversial headline. As a man, if you feel like I've ever used derogatory words towards you, I apologize. I don't want to fight, girl. I'm off it. Well, it wasn't going to be a fight. According to Cardi B, you was going to get jumped, okay? It wasn't really going to be a fight. Um, just FYI, because she said she had N-words in each state, and people be telling her where you're at. So that sounds like jumping to me. That don't really sound like a fight. So it wasn't going to be a fight. It was going to be getting jumped, um, bottles being thrown, whatever. It just wasn't going to be a fair fight. But let me know... How y'all feel about that? It looks like Cardi B is getting the bloggers to bow down towards her. Okay? First time. Uh, moving on to Doja Cat. Doja Cat's Agora Hills, which is a bop, has now earned over 1 billion streams worldwide. Okay? So congratulations to Doja Cat. I like Agora Hills. Um, and, you know, a lot of people were upset that I said Doja Cat samples too much, but she do. And that's just what it is. The facts of the matter is Doja Cat brags about being a producer. She says she produces her own music that came out of her own mouth. If you're your own producer, why do you have to sample so much? None of the other rap girls brag about producing except Doja Cat. So that's why it was a little bit disappointing um, when it was announced that she played a song that sampled Mario. Okay, I think... Um, you Should Let Me Love You at her Airbnb event. Allegedly, that could be the next single. And I just feel like Doja Cat's too talented to be sampling all the time. And a lot of the female rappers do that. All of them. It's annoying. Okay? Uh, we need original beats. I don't care if hip-hop was made off of sampling. People were sampling iconic music. Half of these female rappers won't get sampled because they don't got iconic music. So let's be very clear. Okay, the only female rapper that probably will get sampled in the next 10 to 15 years is probably Nicki Minaj. The rest of y'all hoes don't have iconic music like that to get sampled. So, you know, it's not like history will be repeating itself. You're sampling the greats, but y'all aren't the greats. Okay, so no shade of Doja Cat, but the donkey of the day still stands. Now, moving on to Megan Thee Stallion. Now, it has been reported by Paola Board and Chart Data that Megan Thee Stallion's Megan is to re-enter the Paola Board 200 album chart at number 13 with 44K units following the Act 2 release um, via Hits Daily Double, okay? Now, here's my thing. I feel like this is not that great, no say, considering that... You had like, what, 14 new songs or 12 new songs on Act 2? And 
you know, it can't chart by itself. I find that to be a little bit weird, but maybe it's because act one and act two are combined. Okay. But, you know, I thought it would at least go top five on the 200 album chart. And it looks like Gorilla Glue will be outselling Megan Thee Stallion yet again. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. No, this can't be happening. The numbers are wrong. How is Gorilla Glue top 10 on the U.S. album chart selling 47,000 in its third week? You know, because Gorilla Glue's album been out for three weeks now. And Megan's album, Act 2, just came out and is only going to number 13, selling 43 to 44,000 copies first week, less than Gorilla Glue. That don't make sense. Oh, Megan, yeah, no, this ain't good. Okay, I'm going to need you to ask Devil Nation and Warner from some payola in 2025 because these numbers just don't make sense for a three-time scammy winner. Okay, you're not doing three-time scammy winner numbers. I don't know. Something seems off about Megan's numbers compared to the push that she gets. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, the push that she gets... And all these brand deals that she gets, it just don't add up or match up to the sales, okay? So, I'm going to need her to ask Warner for some payola, okay? She's not independent because she got a distribution deal. They should add the payola to the distribution deal. Now, about Jim Binner made a speech at the um, Kamala campaign in Milwaukee. Um, we go. going... You know, listen to some of it, not all of it, but some of what she had to say. I too have been the underdog. I've been underestimated. My success belittled and discredited. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Women have to work 10 times harder, perform 10 times better, and still people question us how we got to the top. They be like, how she got there? Hold on, let me get, let me, let me warm up. Yeah. Cardi B also said that um, she cannot stand a bully, um, just like Kamala, and she only stands up to one. Some people feel like that was shade towards certain people that she could be beefing with. Okay. Now my whole thing is. I think Cardi B thinks she's bigger than what she actually is. Like, some of her speech was more about her than it actually was about voting, okay? Um, in my opinion, I feel like she should have went into how the other side um, changing laws will affect her family. I feel like she should have went deeper in that, okay? Because she kept mentioning women's rights. Um, but it felt like she was trying to throw underlying shade, talking about, oh, I too have been discredited. Yeah, you've been discredited because you don't got no damn talent. I don't I don't understand how that's hard to understand. I mean, you don't even write your raps. You probably didn't even write that speech. I don't understand why you think you need to be credited for work that you did not do. I don't get that. That's one thing about Cardi B. Cardi B thinks that she's so talented and that she's bigger than what she actually is. Am I upset or annoyed that she was able to do a speech? No, because she appeals to a certain demographic. You know, she she appeals to that ratchet stripper demographic, okay? The same demographic that Amber Whore um, who's on the other side appeals to, that's the same demographic Cardi B appear, appeals to. So I can understand why Kamala picked her, okay? Because, you know, she need a ratchet um, celebrity to go up against Amber and Cardi B is bigger than Amber, okay? Um, and has, to the general public, unfortunately, more credibility than Amber, Okay, so, you know, I know she had to find somebody to go toe to toe with Amber Whore. So at the end of the day, I'm not really upset about this. This was a chess move on Kamala's part. I just felt like she was sneak dissing a lot of other people in her speech. Now, moving on to Payola Board. Payola Board praises Scratch Off's show at the Barclays. Um, they said that Scratch Off delivered a remarkable high energy show that featured tight choreography, 
An emphasis on live rapping and multiple levels of fan engagement. Okay. So let me know if y'all are going to the scratch off picnic gymnasium tour. Now they're trying to push the narrative that scratch off sold out the Barclays. You know, that's what they're trying to push saying, oh, she sold out the Barclays, but I will believe it. No shade. I'm only going to believe it if touring data posted, but it did look full. Okay. It definitely looked like a lot of people was there and it looked sold out. Okay. But the tour set, the tour stage set looks terrible and cheap for somebody that's supposedly doing arena tour. Why is her budget so low? I mean, that's embarrassing. Now moving on to Queen B. Queen B killed her Halloween look for Betty Davis. This Halloween costume is a 10 out of 10. I didn't even think she was going to dress up this year because she hasn't dressed up in a long time. Okay. But I think Queen B is purposely posting a lot. A lot of people think it's a distract from, you know, camel face and possibly the Diddy case. But I think she's posting because she knows that it makes people mad. I think Queen B likes getting underneath people's skin low key. Um, and also Betty Davis was a funk singer and Queen B's act three could be rock and roll. A lot of people are saying it's rock or funk music. So I feel like she also could be teasing how, um, act three could possibly sound like, and she might sample Betty Davis. Okay. Um, she might sample Queen Bee's another one that samples too much though. She sampled a lot on Renaissance. She sampled a good amount of times on Cowboy Carter. Like a lot of these artists are getting a little bit lazy when it comes to, you know, producing original music and always sampling, in my opinion. But I'm here for Act Three. If Act Three's a bop, I'll give Queen Bee her tens. Now moving on from that, Wackademics checks um Megan Thee Stallion. And I was, you know, that's why I said all these other media niggas be suckers. Cause like the first thing that came to my mind is like, I'm gonna see how real these are. By the time I get home, I'm in Houston right now. By the time I get home, nigga, let's, yo, if, if, bro, she's trying to big bang, take little bang type shit. Like she's trying to shut somebody up. And if any artists feel like they could get that off on anybody, maybe not me, maybe they could get off on, I'm not saying she don't got bread or whatever, but get off on her or anybody else. No. That's gonna be the tactic. So, really, I was gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna just see what these media is at with it. All right, yo, let's start a GoFundMe thing. I'm gonna just throw the first 10, 15,000 in there. Let's see if anybody else gonna contribute because the moment we let Rock Nation, and it's not about it's not about an artist, Nation, any of these entities feel like if they sue a blogger or they sue a news reporter in this independent media industry and they can just shut you up, get in, get some type of injunctive measure to make sure you don't report about whatever. Right now, Meg is getting killed. But she getting killed by her own accord. Look, how y'all gonna file a lawsuit on Milagro and then the next day she put out a goddamn documentary. Documentary, she in the documentary saying she lied. I was just, I was looking at it. I'm like, yo, if it come down to it, even if I'm getting involved, like it's gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna just see who gonna put up and shut up. Because at the end of the day, this whole new media independent game we got going on, we got to start seeing, I ain't saying we unionizing type shit, but we got to start seeing who's really for it. And I absolutely agree with DJ Academics, okay? I definitely feel like that the independent media should definitely unionize, okay? I definitely think that would be important because a lot of these celebrities think that they can bully the black media, okay? They don't really do it a lot to the white media, but they do it to the black media. Now, moving on to Tyler, the creator. His new album... Chroma Macpia is set to debut at number one with 297,000 sold first week. And by the way, he lost three days of tracking, especially since, you know, he is beefing with the Swifties. Okay. And the chart of says racist, you know, he was cursing them out on stage uh, when he was performing. Um, and you know, they were bringing up old lyrics of him saying how he allegedly are the woman. So even though he's beefing with the Swifties, he has managed to basically do 300,000 first week. So that is very, very good for Tyler, the creator. Congratulations. 
Not only that, Tyler, the creator, Glorilla, and Sexy Red, and Lil Wayne, Sticky, has returned to the number one spot on the U.S. Apple Music. Now, I personally feel like Gorilla Glue basically ate everybody up on the record. In my opinion, I feel like Gorilla Glue ate everybody up um, in that people are going to be asking Gorilla Glue for more features, okay, because she's the hottest one now. Now, speaking of features, um, you know, Gorilla Glue got a song coming out with Flo. Now, the group Flow Like This, I believe they are assigned to Republic, um, posted that um, Gorilla Glue will be on their new song, In My Bag. And I listened to the snippet. The snippet sounds fire. The only part that I don't like is when Gorilla Glue is rapping on it. No shade, but I think they should have gotten Doja Cat. They probably couldn't afford Doja Cat because Doja Cat probably costs more. But... Um, the song sounds great without Gorilla Glue on it. I don't think she fits the record. In my opinion, the record is a little bit feminine and, um, Gorilla Glue, deep as voice makes it a little bit masculine. In my opinion, it doesn't fit the type of song that they're trying to go for. So I definitely think that they should take her off the record, but they're probably not because they paid for her to be on it. But to me... It doesn't sound that great when she's on it, in my opinion. No shade. Now, it has been reported that, according to Payola Board, Queen B has sold more than 350 million records throughout her career, including her solo productions and work with Destiny Childs. She is now the highest selling black female artist of all time. So congratulations to Queen B. Not really shocked. Okay. She knocked Rihanna out the park. Um, SZA got to catch up. No shade. But at the end of the day, this is why she's the queen of music. I've been calling her the queen of music and now you see why. Because she's the highest selling Black female artists of all time, according to Payola Board, um, Billboard chart data. They said that there was an era in her sales, so it wasn't properly updated. And now that it is, she is the highest selling. So congratulations to Queen B. You can't stop her. She always going to be number one. Now, moving on to Sweetie. Sweetie will be receiving Donkey of the Day. She put out a trash Christmas song. Um, and I just need Sweetie to retire. Okay, the Copper Chain Queen don't have no talent or hits. Um, she put out this trash record. I honestly don't understand how Sweetie still signed. I don't understand it because she don't even have a debut album. Like we talk about Cardi B and um, SZA and other people that take long to drop albums. But Sweetie, all she put out is EPs and trash singles. I need to understand who she's sleeping with to be able to be putting out music and not sell no records, okay? Her last EP did 2000 first week. So I think, no shade, no shade. I think Sweetie is obviously sleeping her way to the bottom. Um, whoever the executive is that she's sleeping with, he's clearly not giving her any payola, um, which she needs. Um, but Sweetie's definitely sleeping around. I don't care what nobody says because at the end of the day, how are you able to put out music and you flop still? Like, you know, and it's a lot of female rappers do flop and still put out music, but Sweetie don't sell nothing. Like, she don't even chart. At least, you know, Megan, Ice Spice could chart at least every once in a while. I mean, I don't understand why Sweetie's able to put out music and Normani's not. And Normani made more noise than Sweetie this year. Musically, and Normani got... Um, shelved. I don't understand that. So I think it's some colorism going on, even though it's two separate labels, but colorism definitely playing a part. And we got to find out who Sweetie's sleeping with. No shade. Because they got to be somebody. Now, moving on to Champagne Thickums and Future, Elliot Wilson confirms my tea. Um, Elliot Wilson said that Champagne Thickums and Future have resolved their beef. Um, he said, all I can say is that they had a phone call. Um, whatever seems to be the issue, um, they seem to have come to a place of resolving that. Okay. Now, if you want to know what the issue was, that's on Patreon, but I also 
told the people on Patreon, and here's the proof, the proof is in the pudding, that Future and Champagne Thickums made up weeks ago. So Elliot Wilson, you are a little bit late. You know, I already spilled that tea um, a few weeks ago. And the reason why they made up is on Patreon. But one thing I will say is that Kung Fu Kenny never lies. See, Champagne Thickums had to run to Atlanta to get a check balance when he needs a hit. He's been flopping all year, so he got to run back to ATL. And I guarantee you he going to run to Thugger. He probably already called Thug and asked him to get on a plane and get to the studio so they can make a hit record because at the end of the day, he's been flopping all year. He hasn't been charting. He put out 100 gigabytes of trash, that flop. Family Disaster has left the Hot 100. Like, it left, like, the third week it came out. Um, None of the songs that he put out have stuck. Um, You know, he put out the No Fames music video, Nobody Cares. So, at the end of the day, he needs Atlanta. He needs Future. He needs um, Thugger, okay? He needs 21 below average, even though 21 is not even really from ATL, but he claims that he is, even though he's from London, but whatever. Okay, people can pretend that they're from a different place when they're rappers. But the point of the matter is he needs ATL and Kung Fu Kenny has been proven right again. The bars never lie. But anyway, I got some very hot tea on Patreon. Link will be in the description. Have a great day.